Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about room frequency response. A lot of you send in your room dimensions and then what I do is I put those dimensions into our database and I actually generate a room frequency response for you because our database is all measured rooms. There's over 116 of them in there. So that's what we do. Let's look at a definition. What is the room frequency response? Well, the room frequency response is the room's ability to handle energy. That's all it is. Energy from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000. Okay, let's use that as our guideline. I mean, there's a lot of debate about that, but for, for sake of discuss, discussion, let's use that as our two endpoints of the continuum. What do we see in today's small rooms? We see this. We always have this big bump below 100 hertz. Okay. And that's just characteristic and typical of all small rooms. Well, this bump right here is a direct relationship to the height. I'm sorry, a direct relationship to the width, height, and length of your room. That's why we're always trying to get people to follow that width, height, and length ratio that minimizes this. You can take this room that measures this way with this frequency response, change the width, height, and length, and get a new response that maybe is something like this. So this is way better than this. And here's why. For every 10% of this that you have to reduce, and you have to reduce it, because this is just co completely un unacceptable. There's so much energy here creating so much distortion that there's just so much you can't hear. And this is that low end boom that everybody talks about. And it's throughout the room and spread throughout the room at many frequencies. So we have to reduce this. We have to get it down to an acceptable level. Any, every 10% reduction in this bump will, will result in about a 10% increase in sound quality. That said, you need the proper treatments to minimize that bump. So the room frequency response is how sound will fit in the room. And if we choose the right width, height, and length ratios, we minimize this bump. And that's important because minimizing that bump reduces our treatment costs. The, the bigger this bump, the more it's going to cost to treat it, and the more we're not going to be able to get to a point where it's going to be acceptable because low frequency energy is about management. It's not about a complete solution. Even the best of rooms, even in the most expensive studios, will have some kind of low frequency pressure issue that they did not see and they weren't able to uh, eliminate. So it's all about management. The bigger the bump, because you didn't choose the right width, height, and length dimensions for your room, and don't get me wrong, you're always going to have this, but the goal is to try and reduce it in the beginning because good sound is a series of well-done things, a lot of little well-done things done in the right order. So the first thing we want to do is choose a room that has the correct width, height, and length that doesn't have this huge bump on the low end because every 10% of reduction, and maybe a bump like this, we have to reduce 50%. So that costs money. And, and the money is in the form of the right kind of treatment. So we want to make sure that we address treatment for this bump. And what is treatment for this bump? Pressure activated devices, not foam, not boxes filled with building insulation, not four inch deep products, not six inch deep products. You're not going to get this energy. You're not going to tame this with uh, technologies that aren't designed to do that. So. Choose the right width, height, and length so you get the right, the best frequency response that you can get in the room. And then what you don't get with room size and volume, we have to treat. And treatment costs money. So if we choose our room ratios the best, and there's a whole series of ratios that we can choose, and we'll, we'll go through that on another uh, video. But suffice it to say for this one, choose the right ratio, width, height, and length. Minimize that low frequency bump. Cut your treatment cross, and when you do treat, treat with the right technology. Hope Thank you. Enjoyed you. today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. 
and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.